when we prepared um, presentations on me, then I thought uh, we'll give the introduction to ourselves here. Um, we did it now earlier, so we can shortly jump uh, over that. But I'm wood scientist by education, went to the Netherlands and worked there for long from uh, the end of the 80s, where I got to know quite some of the other older guys uh, sitting there as well early already. And then I'm back to Germany since uh, the 2000s. I think, and that's the title of, of this slide here, um, that we need much more research in the wood area to solve um, the, the main challenges of mankind. And I think some of the points uh, Joris and Rupert already had been mentioning, and this is in German, so don't bother too much, but this showing the innovation in different sectors. And there are quite uh, recent figures um, from Germany. And what you see in the light blue colors there, it's the other um, sectors like uh, the car sector or electronics or whatever, and they invest uh, more than 10% of the turnover in uh, development and new products and so on. And the dark blue down there, this is the wood sector. So less than 2% is invested in innovation. And I think this is, um, this is not a good thing because we have to do much more development to um, solve the problems what uh, Joris uh, and Rupert had been mentioning already. And one of the main challenges, it's just one, but uh, the one what had been discussed, of course, the, the last uh, couple of years mainly, is um, that we have to try to get um, less CO2 to the atmosphere or being able to get more CO2 um, bound in products. One possibility there is, of course, that we um, get much more uh, CO2 stored in our wood products. And this estimation there had been uh, done in, in a study and showing that roughly in a household up to 30 tons of uh, carbon is stored. So I think it's a very important part of the whole story to try to get um, the carbon stored as long as possible and not um, um, emitted uh, earlier. And had been already talked about that burning is, of course, uh, one possibility, but one bringing then the, the CO2 too fast again into the atmosphere. Yeah, so this had been shortly mentioned as well, I think, by Rupert, uh, and much better would be to hold the, the carbon much longer in the cycle, so not to burn it after the first life, but to find ways to recycle it and cascade it. Um, a lot of things to discuss here, and probably we can do that together. And, and nowadays, we have so many possibilities of using wood uh, and holding it for longer in the cycle. And uh, you know, uh, as well as me, about a lot of these uses, um, like it's shown here from solid wood to paper and pulp and um, wood composites and so on. New developments, like you are aware, um, upon as well, and looking to to Rupert and to to Vienna, where when you see the left side there, going in wood constructions up to 80 meter and high is really, of course, gigantic. And when when we started studying wood science, we never would have thought about doing that. So there are a lot of uses um, and more uses of wood, and I think it's a great thing. But even much more of that, of course, we all know that we can use the wood components, cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin and extractives for a lot of different uh, uses. But um, up to not too long ago, we did not really use them. But nowadays, there's a lot of programs by the bigger companies in the world um, here in Europe. A lot of companies in Scandinavia, as, uh, for one example, um, bringing that really to market and by that using the chemistry of uh, wood and coming to totally new products. Yeah, um, no time for running through all these different um, possibilities where it's possible to, to put wood into. Um, but you can imagine that it's extremely wide uh, when you start using not only the solid part, but uh, being able then to use the chemistry as well. One thing, and then it comes to what had been mentioning, mentioned by, by Rupert and by yours a bit as well, um, there it comes to my research field where I had been linked to all my research career, is thinking about how are we able to store the CO2 as long as possible and look to then to prolong the durability of wood. So avoid any degradation by fungi and insects. And um, of course, you can use... Uh, durable tropical hardwoods, um, but we don't have them available in sufficient quantities. And then you can use biocides, um, and they are under a lot of discussions here, but we work on that. And I think the discussions are much more negative than the these products, the new products really are. 
Um, and I had been focusing a lot in the field of wood modification. Um, I saw quite some names on the list of uh, younger researchers who are in this area. Um, and I think most of the others are aware of what that means. A very short sentence about that. In wood modification, you try to change the chemistry of the cell wall by adding um, chemicals into the cell wall, try to react it there, and then come with a total new product um, because the wood cell wall is then behaving very differently to a non-modified uh, cell wall. And by that, you can create very new materials. And in the course of the last, yeah, I would think uh, 30 years or so, um, as long as I'm in that uh, area, um, there have been quite some developments. All these technologies are very old uh, and have been studied already in the 1950s or 30s sometimes. But the major steps have been taken in Europe now the last 20, 30 years to come with new pro um, products and processes. I don't run through those here. Most of them are really known to you. And there's a lot of work ongoing to find new and better processes what are even more environmentally acceptable, um, probably based on renewable uh, sources um, and find the right technology what is more easy to steer. And there's a lot of activities here on production level up to now, but as well on the research level. A short look to what had been discussed already since long. And when you are in this area and you as young researchers, I think are mostly on the left part here. You're looking to new chemicals, you are looking to possible reactions, you're looking probably to the first steps in the processes. And this is all very important because this is absolutely necessary. But when you have been done that and when you all of a sudden recognize that this is not bringing a new market, um, then you will learn that upscaling something from the lab scale to a bigger scale, this is really a, a huge step usually because I always say on lab scale, everything works on small samples, on, on FIPS, um, chips and fibers. Um, but really to get a process what is feasible and what is commercially interesting, this is a huge step. And because very often the step is not possible to be taken, this is the reason why just few of these uh, technologies are on the market right now. And then, on, of course, the uh, furthest right part here in the slides um, is the most important in our world. Um, and this is the economical part. Um, so a lot of things do work quite well technologically but are um, too expensive in our cost situation right now and there the oil price play uh, play a very important role if oil price goes up a lot of things are possible if oil price goes down as uh, the last uh, half year or so or longer then a lot of these possibilities all of a sudden disappear again what is needed and i think this is my last slide already um we learned all this last year. It started with we need a wood industry what is innovative and future oriented. And um, there are a lot of companies around, and I have the feeling that there are more and more companies um, coming because, at least in Europe, companies do know that we only have a chance here to compete with China and other, let's say, evolving countries that uh, if we are innovative enough to, to come with new processes and products. We need a good funding structure for R&D. And please bear in mind here that most of our companies in whole Europe, so there's not a such big difference between Southern Europe and Middle Europe or Northern Europe. Northern Europe probably a bit different, but we are usually small and medium enterprise uh, oriented here. And um, the funding structures are not so easy for that kind of companies very often. What we need as well is a good research infrastructure. And it had been um developing a lot and on the other side a lot of the research infrastructure the last 10 15 years in some countries disappeared because wood research i think is extremely important but the lobby um is much less than in other sectors so we have to really go for it and hold the research infrastructure on a high level and was it mark now or was it um, saying that we need good educated young people. Um, the amount of jobs in that sector is huge um, and there are much to less 
well-educated people in this area. So I think you will have a bright future if you're flexible enough, not staying like Rupert in Austria now, but uh, that you go abroad and um, take your chance. Um, I think you will have a very good chance in this uh, very interesting sector.